Uh, Steve, uh, first of all, can you give us the latest on the uh, the walking wounded, literally, in Wayne, Wayne Rutledge's case on Wednesday, but the rest of them as well? Yeah, so, so Carl obviously has uh, got one more game left uh, of his three-match ban. Um, obviously, Wayne and Mike came off with, uh, with injuries the other day. So, uh, so not ruling the minnow out yet. We, uh, we give them every chance that, they, uh, that we can and see where we're at, ready for the game. I mean, both of them are very keen and you're, you're managing Mike in particular every game, mm-hmm. aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've spoken about Mike quite a lot, haven't we, because of his um, um, being out for a while, been, you know, he's an important player for us and, you know, sort of just chucking him back in, really, <clears throat> without any, you know, preparation games. And we've had to manage his minutes, you know, he's not up to 90 minutes yet and things like that. So to go from playing no games to playing three in as many uh, days as he has was a good, was, you know, a real bonus and, and you know, credit to, to Mike for his commitment to his recovery. But uh, it's not normal. It wouldn't normally happen to, to do what he's done. So, uh, you know, I'm not surprised that he's, you know, picking up, you know, knocks and pulls, you know, elsewhere in his body. And will you have to work hard on Wayne before Sunday? Well, yeah, we'll have to work hard with, with everybody, really. You know, the, uh, a, lot, a lot of games have been played, not many, not many days in between. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, we've got another two, so minimum uh, coming up. It's really about sort of recovery and preparation. That's, that's the only programme we're in at the moment for the lads who have been playing. Will you have, is there a possibility you'll have George Byers? And what's the score with Joe Roden and Freddie Woodman? Joe's, no, Ben Wilmot's, no, they're out for longer term. I uh, should have mentioned that, shouldn't I, at the start. Um, Freddie and George are um, recovering. Um, not not ready yet, but as I said, everybody's doing their best to um, to be as fit as they can, as quick as they can. And um, we're we're basically taking it day by day, but they won't be available to start Freddie and and George um, on Sunday. Could they... Would those two be available for the second leg? I don't, I don't know. We'll have to take it uh, step by step, Rob. So, so Freddie Woodman in particular, because he's on loan from Newcastle, hasn't gone back to Newcastle. He's still no, of course, Newcastle. but that, that was done before he got injured. It's, it's unlikely uh, with Fred, Rob. You know, I don't want the you know I don't want the headlines to be that you know Woodman might be available because he's he's you know it's highly likely that he won't be. You know, but, um, but Freddie's such a committed lad and good good sort of athlete where he, they will recover fairly quickly but um, you know he, he won't be playing on uh, on Sunday that's for sure What about it then Steve what have you made of Brentford and psychologically do you have the edge going in on the back of uh, the wind you've got well, We're definitely in a good place Rob that's for sure um, not, not just obviously the the way that we secured the playoff place which was um, a bit unique to say the least um, but you know, we feel since we returned our first game at Middlesbrough, we felt like we've played bar, bar one game really well, and you know we scored a lot of goals, and you know we've looked defensively uh, well set up, and um, you know we, our, you know confidence is high. There's no secret. You know um, we, we really believe in what we do anyway, but you know that's never been more than how it feels at the moment because of obviously the, the results that we've got and the way that we're playing. So. Um, whether that gives us the edge or not, I'm not sure because you never quite know what um, what the opposition is going to be like. Um, and I've said all, all along, you know, this return to, to game schedule, I really think it's about focusing on yourselves because it's it's a different situation. It's a unique situation. I think if you are concerned on others too much in yourselves, I don't think that's the, the right way to go about it. So. That's what we've done since. Well, we do that anyway, but that's what we've we've done even more so since we've come back. And you know, we're not going to change now. But with um, you know, everybody knows Brentford were the top scorers in the championship. They've got a formidable front line, haven't they? They're, they're called the BMW. Um, what have you made of their progress to where they are? Yeah, Brentford. I think. Uh, listen, it's no easy feat to get into the playoffs. You know, and obviously they, they were the, the, the top end of the playoff position. So to do that, you need to have quality all over the pitch. You know, it's such a tough league. Um, you can see the teams that haven't even got into the uh, to the playoffs, and some of them going anywhere near it. You know, uh, uh, 
actually playing against them. They're really tough games with loads of you know really experienced and good players. So for Brentford, you know, have been at the, the top end of the table most of the season, and um, there's, there's obvious reasons for that. And um, we need to, of course, be aware of their of their strengths, but at the same time, back our own strengths. And um, um, like I said, more than anything, this period is about belief, I think, and confidence. Um, and that's that's what we're going to be focused on. What will be a good result to take into the second leg? Obviously, you're looking for a win, but you know how how does that work in your mind? The two legs. Yeah, well, yeah, there was obviously a different situation being the, being the two legs, and you know, um, it depends how the game goes, Rob. You know, I think if one of the teams are really on top and are playing much better, then they, you know, they they'll be disappointed in both of the semi-finals, not just ours. You'd be disappointed not to capitalise on that and try and score goals. If it's the other way, you, you, you'd want you want to try stay stay in the tie. You know, you, you try and keep a clean sheet. And so, uh, until the game pans out the way it does, you know, it's difficult to say, um, you know, what a good result will be. Of course, you want to win. You want to keep a clean sheet. Any advantage you can get going into the second leg is is obviously what you'd be looking for. But we know things doesn't don't happen straightforward in this league, and I'm sure the playoffs will be no different. Mm. Um. I will ask you, because I have to, the prospect of an all-Welsh final for Welsh football? I think we're looking forward to Sunday, Rob. We've got two <laughs> games against um, Brentford. You know, very good team. You know, we're playing really well as well. Um, to look beyond that would be, um, would be wrong and disrespectful to Fulham as well. Uh, and for you, uh, in your first season as manager, uh, head coach or whatever, just how big are these two games for you and also the significance for the club as well? It isn't about any individual, Rob, and certainly not me. Uh, that's for sure. I think that um, um, as soon as you step foot through, through the doors at this club, you realise that the, the togetherness is the most important thing, whether it's players, you know, coaching staff, support staff, staff at the stadium, supporters... You know, there's no no hierarchy at this football club, and that's led by by uh, Trevor Birch, the way he runs the, the the football club. And you know, I try and do the same on the on the playing side. You know, this is a community area, community club, and not everybody has that. Not areas, all areas of the, of the country have that. So when you've got it, you know, you you you've got to make sure that you um, live and breathe it every single day. So um, the club that plays in the playoff on Sunday and, and the, the following Wednesday um, will be a club that's very much together uh, and um, support each other. Um, and I think when, you, when you've got that, it can be really helpful, particularly in, in, in good times like this. You know, I think like you look at the four teams in the, in the championship and we're, we're uh, sorry, in the playoffs, and we're the, we're the outliers really. You know, we're playing against a team that have bought players in recent years. I know they've sold as well, but We've bought players, and the other semi-final is two of the most resourced squads um, in the league. You know, and the strength and depth that they've got is ridiculous, really, compared to us. But um, we don't mind that because we really believe in what we what we do, and we love the fact we've got loads of young players, and we've given them opportunity. We love the fact that we're trying to play in a certain way, and um, you know. You know, a couple of I've read a couple of things about scraping into the playoffs and things like that. You, you can't you can't scrape into the playoffs. Not after forty six games. It's you know you deserve to be there. I know it was dramatic. I know it was a one off. You know what was it a four or five goal swing in twenty minutes or whatever it was. You know, but um, you know you get what you deserve, don't you? And you know we've this year we've the boys have been brilliant. Supporters have supported us even through. You know, little runs where we've we've not won won as many games as we should, but we've never changed our way of playing. You know, we've never not believed in in the players, especially the young ones. We've stuck to our plan, stuck to our guns, and you can see that the other night. You know, we needed three in the end. If you look at it, we needed three goals in twenty minutes. Can't remember a you know a lot you know a long booted ball. Every goal we scored was the way we play. You know, and um, um, that pleases me as much as anything, because of course, we're, we're going into this, this next couple of weeks, if you like, with everything that we've got and really backing ourselves. But we also know we're doing it in a way that's going to stand us in good stead because we're building as well. So um, 
so good times, you know, we need to thrive on it. We need to enjoy it. You know, there's, um, there's everything to go for. Steve, all the best. Cheers, Rob. Hi, Steve. Moose, okay, mate? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, mate, yeah. Good to see you. And you. Um, I see a lot of similarities between you and Thomas Frank. You managed England youth levels. He's managed Denmark at youth levels. Do you, do you see the comparison and do you think that we're going to see not a normal playoff semi-final where everybody's racked by nerves and maybe kicking it on, but we are going to see two proper football matches? I think, I think if both teams are playing their, their way, Moose, I think you'll definitely see a technical game, tactical game, um, a battle of identities, if you like, and, and styles. Yeah, that, that's, that's for sure. They're fairly similar, you know. So, um, so yeah, I don't think it's too much about the, the coaches, um, or certainly not, not from our point of view. I think it's about, you know, to, to play with a philosophy and identity. You need everybody to be on board, you know. So, um, so that's what we'd be committing to do. But yeah, no, I think yeah, it has definitely got the makings of, of entertain, uh, an entertaining uh, couple of games with loads of good players on show or trying to play in a certain way that can, you know, that can um, create and score goals. I was speaking to Andre Ayo about half an hour ago and he was um, accentuating the positives of you sticking by and trusting youth players because of your background. And, and two of them in particular who've done the business for you before and probably your biggest game ever as a coach before these games, uh, the, obviously the World Cup final with England, they scored for you, Mark Gerhe and Rian Brewster. And, and both have been very impressive for you on loan from Chelsea and Liverpool. Yeah, they, they have. Um, and, you know, it's difficult to... If you talk about them too, I think you also have to mention Ben Cabango and you have to mention um, Conor Gallagher. Um, you know, Freddie Woodman's not that much older, so Liam Collins. So, um, you know, all the young boys have done really well. Jordan Garrick's broken, broken through. So I feel like I'm missing someone out there because we've got so many young players. If I have, I apologise. But it's just the way we, we're going about our business. Um, is we, we, don't, get, don't get me wrong, you know, it isn't just about opportunity and giving young players a go and believing in them. It's about winning as well and being successful, you know. But you have to have a plan and a way of, of achieving that. And ours is to, um, is to do what we're doing, you know. And that's what, that's, you know, go, go back to the other night, you know, all them players that I've just mentioned, they were all on the pitch, you know, at the same time. And, you know, everyone, of course, are talking about the goals and we've got a brilliant story and a role model in Wayne Routledge and the things that he can still do. But if you look at Mark A's tackle and Erwin Mulder's saves, they were as important. You know, we were one at the back at... at uh, some stage in the game um, these these boys all of them are, are really giving giving their best and believing in what we do and you know we have to keep that going if we can that night in India when Mark and Rian scored for you and, and you won the World Cup I mean again they, they know they can trust you you know they can trust them when it's really big the games yeah, I think like I mean a lot of the a lot of our players have never played in the championship until until playing for us. You know, all of them boys that have, that I've just just mentioned. You know, Freddie Woodman's the same, and you know we all we've all seen and watched enough of the championship. It is full of experience, you know, and players that uh, have been around the block and have, have seen and done it before. But a lot of ours haven't, and that that's the bit that makes me. Um, the most proud of when I see, see the team play well is that they're coming up against um, these clubs, I just mentioned the other three in, in, in the playoffs. You know, in, in terms of experience and some other things, they're miles in front of us. But, you know, we're thriving on the moment and, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're believing in the players, we're going for it and uh, let's see what it takes us. Last one. Um, Brentford obviously had promotion within their own hands at one stage, you know, like they were actually second in the table and West Brom uh, were losing. Um, and although you say you didn't scrape into the playoffs, or you didn't, but it was a magnificent performance the other night to overturn a, a Herculean effort from to get past Forest. And does that mean that, that really you have nothing to lose and you're in your, you, you have the momentum going with you? Yeah, like I said before, we're in a really good place at the moment. We're, we're playing really well. You know, what is it, nine games, you know, we've won five of them, drawn two. It's a good return, you know, it's that, that is what causes momentum and form. So, um, so you know, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that we weren't feeling good about ourselves at the moment. We are, 
you know, and the, the training ground's a, a vibrant one. Um, but it's also a very, very focused one, a very committed one, and one that's just determined to keep going. And um, I think in the end, that, that's what achieving teams do, don't they? They, they? they build, they keep building and building and building, and we're not ready to stand still yet. Whether it's the next week or so, or next season, you know, we, we're so committed to improving and, and getting to where we want to be. And if it happens in the next couple of weeks, then fantastic. If not, then it won't be from a lack of trying, that's for sure. Best of luck, and um, I don't know if you're practicing penalties or whether you'll need penalties, but you know, good luck in trying to get to Wembley. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Hey, Steve, you're right. And um, I think it's uh, unless you've been involved in it as a player or a manager, it's really hard to describe the feeling of what you did on Tuesday. But has it unlocked another level in your players going forward? Because surely their belief is now that they can they can do anything. Um. Well, it was all in the plan best to wait till 20 minutes to go and have a five goal turnaround, you know, it's, uh, um, no, you, you, you're right. L listen, it was unique. You know, there's no, no doubt about that. And, you know, we were, of course, just focused on, on what we were doing because I, I said before the last two games, you know, let's get six points. And the, the only way that we could put uh, or apply any sort of pressure on anybody else was just by winning our games. Um, and, and in the end, that's, that's what we did. You know, by us going 2 one 3 one 4 one, it must have put pressure elsewhere and, and had an effect on that game. So, um, so it, it, just, it just adds to what I said before, Beth, you know, with, with your question of like, yeah, we're feeling good. We're feeling good. We're feeling hungry. We're feeling focused. We know we're doing the right things. And, um, you know, for every good game that we have and every positive result that we have, it just adds to that feeling. Yeah, and, and I'm guessing, you know, that, that feeling is something you can't coach on a, on a pitch as it is. It's just something that builds, you know, over the last nine games. And talking about that, you know, at the very start of this post-lockdown, we talked about a nine-game tournament feel. We're going almost a bit like a tournament, knockout stages now. And kind of talking about, um, I've got his name, Moose, I don't know his name, uh, what said earlier. But that experience that you've had, obviously, as a tournament manager, has that helped you prepare your players any differently? Um, it is different. Obviously, we're going into a semi-final and it's two legs, so the context uh, context is definitely different. I and mean, you know, we have to talk about that. We have talked about that with with the players. You know, you could go to extra time, could go to penalties. So um, we try and preempt as much stuff as we can with the players. Even the other night, you know, we we knew that we needed good communication lines from the other games to our bench to then onto the pitch, and we plan for it all. You know, and in the end, the marginal gains can sometimes mean so so much so so we know we're going into something different and and yeah you know i have done tournament be football before but so is thomas you know with with, with denmark um so um so there's no real advantage you know and in, and you know we just need to commit to the games in, as we normally do and hopefully you know it can see us right Last question from me. How, how are you feeling? Because obviously Tuesday was unbelievable. Obviously, I know that you switched on for, for the next couple of games, but how, how are you looking? How, how are you feeling? Um, I've been feeling brilliant every day in this job, you know, because um, it's a brilliant football club, you know, um, that's built on sort of pride and passion and all that sort of stuff. And, the, you know, the belonging when you work here is, is so great that you can only feel like you want to give your best and, you know, you, yeah, I feel accountable and um, responsible to, to, to trying to produce for, for the supporters and the, and the feelings So I feel great, you know, and I think oh, everybody's feeling great. And, you know, some of the uh, messages we've had about reaching the playoffs have been, have meant a lot, you know, because um, I know it, it's, it's given people a real buzz for their football club and um, a football club they're, that they're proud to, to support or be a part of. So um, I think, you know, I'd be lying if, if we didn't feel proud of that. and We didn't feel like the fact that in what is a difficult time in so many people's lives and so many businesses going bust and people losing their jobs and et cetera, et cetera. And if we've given people a night to remember, then that means a lot to me, you know, and I think it means a lot, a lot to the players as uh, as well because everything we do is for the supporters and, and, and the people around the city and we work for the club so but at the same time you know we're using that to make us even more hungry um, even more focused and committed to you know what might be around the corner well good luck for Sunday cheers Beth
Just a quick one, Steve. Um, Go ahead. When, when you have the kind of hot streak like you had at the, at the beginning of the season when you won six on the bounce and then Brentford have had this hot streak, eight wins on the bounce, all, all the clubs have had those at various points in the season. When they come to an end like Brentford has and they lose two on the bounce, how quickly is it, how difficult rather is it to, to quickly get back that momentum? The little things that have started to go wrong is it difficult to put those back together quickly? I can only speak about ourselves. I think what, what we've done when we've when we've gone on good runs or not so good runs is just worked even harder doing what we do, you know, and um, and, and believing in it. You know, we're, we're like I said, the other three teams at the in, in the playoffs are at a completely different stage to us, you know. Um, so and then the context is different, you know. And the expectations are really high elsewhere, but. Um, we uh, we've just you know through through the ups and downs of the season just just stayed committed to to the plan and um, you know I, I promised myself personally I would do that in senior management and it's hard sometimes when maybe things are not going as well as what you would like or luck is not on your side it's hard but um, but I just know you know um, succeed or fail I think you sleep better at night and and that's what what we're determined to do. You talked uh, about Wayne Routledge, I know, a little bit uh, the other night after the game, but just sum up the kind of influence that he has on and off the field. I mean, the, the first of his two goals that he scored that night mm. was just, it was just a craftsman, wasn't it? He was just a that guy that goal, knows what he's doing. If that goal was in the Liverpool or Chelsea game that was on at the same time, we would be yeah. seeing it over and over and over again. It was... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fantastic goal, you know, and like I said, the, the, you know, where will be first to say there were loads of individual moments in the game that, that mattered equally. But if you, you know, you asked me about Wayne's first goal and even the second goal with his head, you know, which he smiles about, but the first goal was just technique of the highest order, you know, to, first of all, the timing of the run, the pass from Grimes, but then to do what he did. I said at the time, you know, when he did it, you, you're like, uh, not you expect it, but you see, it, you see something like so often with Wayne in training. You know, there's not a day go by where, you, where you're not impressed by something he does that nobody else can really do. Um, you know, such an athletic lad as well with his mobility and his coordination. But, um, but yeah, it, it was a you know, brilliant night for him. And um, he was, I think, you know, he couldn't take the smile off his face. He was really, really proud of what he did, I think. And I know we were proud of him as well. We certainly, we're certainly privileged to have him with us still. You know, he's a brilliant person. I cannot speak highly enough of him, you know, for, for the role he plays when he's on the pitch, but absolutely when he's off it. You know, he's been priceless to so many people. And within the blend, within the mix, you talked about the, the youthfulness and the fearlessness that they have. Do you need one or two at the other end who are 15 years older who just yeah. bring something else to the mix? Definitely, you know, as you look at... Um, um, you, you know, you look at teams that have been promoted from the championship and, you know, statistics will tell you that the core of that group at age between sort of 26 and 29 years of age, you know, I think you, we've only got, I think, Bidwell and, and Mike. You know, Mike's been out for a long part. We've only really had Bidwell, you know. So uh, we're defying the odds of being of doing what, 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 we're, what we're doing. So, um, but, you know, we have got experience around, you know, Erin's in goal. You know, um, Andre, you know, Nathan and Wayne are around, Kyle, you know, and, and they've got to, um, you know, they've got to show their worth as well with their experience, but they will because that's what they do naturally anyway. Can Great. Just, Thanks, Steve. The broadcast, broadcast questions are all done. Did you get that? Can Sorry, I'm not broadcast, so I totally pushed in there, so <laughs> if we're all done on the broadcast questions, we can continue with the written ones. Yeah, I'll chip in, Barn. Is that all right? Yeah, no worries, Yeah, afternoon, Steve. How are you doing? Mitch, how are you? Yeah, all good, thank you. Um, just to follow on Graham's question there, really, on uh, Wayne Routledge, you've spoken publicly about Freddie Woodman, Kyle Morton, the players that you, you'd love to see stay on next season. Is that, does the same apply with, with Wayne Routledge? Uh, yeah, I would like that. Um, no, no, no doubt about that because I still, I still think he has um, uh, assets to offer, you know, um, and, I, and, I, and it's 
not just because of what he did the other night, although that was brilliant. But you know, he, he's, um, he's he can still produce. You know, so um, you know, we, we, like Graham alluded to, then you do need experience around, and he, he obviously oozes that, and, and he looks out for the other players as well. So um, you know, having him around is, is definitely a positive. He signed a one-year extension around the same time you came in last year. Um, is that something that you could potentially look at doing again? Because Trevor Birch has obviously revealed that um, he has a future role at the club, maybe behind the scenes as well when he does hang up his boots. Yeah, maybe, maybe on, on, on a player. And I think that, that like I said, um, you know, with all the boys who are out of contract and possible ins and outs, you know, when, when something's signed and sealed, if you like, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know. But um, I think. Wayne and everybody else just really focus now on this next game, two games minimum, and um, you know everything else after that will take care of itself, Mitch. And just a word on them. Um, I, know, I love having Wayne around, and you know, long may it continue. Yeah, and, and just a word on them, um, Rian Brewster as well. He scored ten goals in twenty appearances. Now only Saeed Benrahma, of all people, you've seen on Sunday, has scored more in the championship since he came into uh, Swansea from Liverpool in January. Um, just sum up his impact, not just the goals, but everything that he's brought to you as a as a player. Um, yeah, just uh, like like you've just said, ten goals in in twenty games. Um, first running, you know, first team football, playing sort of week in week out, sometimes three games a week. Um, more than that at the moment uh, is a brilliant return and. Um, you know, in the end, you know, you, what do you want from your number nine goals, you know, and, and teams that have been successful in, in not just this league, but any league as somebody that sort of gets that. And, you know, you know, we've had to rely a lot on Andre this year. You know, he's, he's got an excellent return as well. Don't forget, he, you know, he hasn't always played as, as a striker. He's played most of his games as a, as a wide player. So um, you know, bringing Rian in, you know, as, as I've said on many occasions, I think everybody's benefited from it, you know, the football club especially, you know, but... Um, but it's good to see how he's how he's thriving and how he's growing, and um, hopefully there's a few more few more goals left in him for this season.